Hello everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here. Welcome to the vegetable garden pretty early in the morning. I'm not fully caffeinated yet, but we've had some crazy weather here. I know there's been crazy weather basically everywhere, so it's just what kind of crazy weather you've had. So in the past 10 days, we have broken a ton of records. 10 days ago, or maybe even less, nine days ago, maybe 10 miles inland, there, were, there was frost on the ground. The past three days, it's been over 90. Last year, I think we had a total of like five days over 90 the entire summer. So it's just been crazy here. So that has led to some real challenges for a gardener. So I was holding back on planting a lot of things because I didn't, even though I didn't think it was likely we would have frost here, and we didn't at my house, but I just didn't want to put annuals and really tender things out because it did get down to 40. So that is no, none of these tender plants are happy in that in that case but then all of a sudden it got really hot and because I do most of my gardening on the weekends I went from a weekend where it was quite cool to a weekend where it's really hot and keeping up with the watering on plants has been really hard and they've suffered because of it to be perfectly honest but they're all going to be so much happier when I can get them in the ground here and what we're working on today is if you recall, um, I talked a little bit about, uh, in a video earlier this year, I talked a little bit about um, getting a little creative with the layout of your plants in your vegetable garden, especially if you grow in raised beds. So there are a lot of reasons that people have traditionally grown in rows. Much of that is involving weeds and being able to tell what the plants are and being able to weed easily. But if, especially if you're growing in raised beds or in a small garden area, and you're the person planting it and you're not planting you know 100 foot rows of one plant um, a lot of those reasons for planting in rows goes away so if it makes you happier to have a little bit of design in your garden you can change it up a little bit which is what i'm doing now remember i designed an herb bed which is primarily basil plus other herbs and we talked about it on paper and now I've got it all laid out because it's time to plant these basil so we're using three different kinds of basil here um, and I will show you in all these plants boy I wish they were looking better than they are let me tell you focus this is the main basil that's sort of forming this is a low growing mounded basil that's going to form um, sort of the hedge of basil uh, this is my very favorite basil. This is um, Everleaf Emerald Towers. I grew it last year. It is an outstanding basil. Just love it. And then we've got uh, this beautiful purple one. So if you recall the plan, the plan is to sort of create two diamond shapes here. And um, make sure I get all these back in the right spots. The plan here is to create two diamond shapes. Um, so that what we have is the hedge creating the diamonds plus we've got a green in the middle of one and a purple in the middle of the other and then the rest of them are opposite so we've got green around the edges purple in the middle here purple around the edges green in the middle here um, and then in the rest of these areas I'm going to put the rest of the herbs that we've got going on so I thought I would show you these and then I'm just going to get these all on the ground I have to lay them out ahead of time because my brain needs some time to process these things and I am gonna wear gloves because, oh my gosh, I have not been wearing gloves much this year. My hands are just wreckage. I feel like I need like a hand mask or something. They just are ripped up. So um, I'm just gonna get these planted and then I'll show you what we're gonna fill in in the nice little corners that are created and at the end of this bed. I'm gonna plant the hedge first because I feel like I wanna make sure that I get that even. That'll drive my OCD nuts if I don't. So all of these seeds that I grew these plants from came from Jung Seed, and that is actually uh, who is sponsoring this video. And actually, it's a series of videos. So we talked about the planting, and um, now we're doing the planting, and we will be back later in the summer so that we can show you how this all grows in and how this looks. So the nice thing about using basil in a form that's kind of a design is that you can eat from it and you won't lose the design. Although it's not a bad idea to sometimes to start another round of um, basil for later in the season because sometimes the plants can get a little tired looking so um, you get a nice fresh crop going then. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've got all the basil planted and because they're so small, you guys, I planted these in March. Everything should be bigger. These plants are gonna be, you saw there was a lot of root bound plants. They're gonna be so much happier to be in the ground, but I think you can see the design now. So that leaves us with little triangles here and there and in the corners. And then down here, we're gonna plant, I've got this trellis here. That trellis is for cucumbers. So cucumbers are gonna go at the end of this bed, but I'll still have some little angled spots to tuck in a few things. So let me show you what we're gonna put there. So in this corner down here, um, I'm gonna put, I got myself a big rosemary plant. You know, rosemary grows pretty slowly here and I find that we, can always eat more than we have. Also, I happen to think it's just a gorgeous plant. And this is not, rosemary does not overwinter for us outside here. You can try to bring it in. Some people have a fair amount of success with that. I am not one of those people, so I've sort of given up on that and I just buy rosemary every year. I'm trying to do this without totally obliterating my basil now. Now for this corner, I've got two different kinds of thyme. I've got a winter thyme and a variegated lemon thyme. I'm just gonna tuck those both in here. I also bought these plants. Now down in this little triangle that we have here, um, I'm actually going to put three parsleys. This is Italian flat leaf parsley, and these are super root bound. And you can tell they're, I mean, there should have been out of these pots a long time ago. Three might be overkill here. Um, parsley is so easy that I could uh, move these plants if there's too many here, um, or I will just keep eating it. So, also uh, last year, the swallowtail butterflies. Um, we're so happy to have the parsley that quite a lot of it um, was lost to caterpillars. And I'm, see, look at all those roots. And I'm quite happy to share my plants with those fabulous um, insects and pollinators. Okay, so that's the parsley. On this corner, my mom actually started a little bit of dill and had a little bit of extra. Um, I will also throw some dill seeds in here as well. Um, but we're going to put a little dill here. This will also be a favorite of the, um, of the caterpillars, the butterfly caterpillars. But I do love dill. So I will throw some seeds down here as well, and we'll get some dill going there. And then last but not least, I've got a couple of nasturtiums here. Now nasturtiums are super easy to just grow directly from seed and I will probably put some more in, but I did start some ahead of time. This one is baby rose and this one is Shirel. Now, of course, I love nasturtiums. They're one of my very favorite um, plants and uh, you know, they're edible, of course, all parts of them are edible, um, but also they're super beneficial in um, in your garden um, because they can act as a trap crop. Um, they can also attract bu uh, good bugs. So they're great to have. Okay, so what goes in this part right here? So this is all going to be cucumbers um, and I'm not going to plant those today, um, but we'll have room here and then those will go up this trellis. And sometimes even behind this trellis, I'll throw in a couple rows of lettuce just to maximize this space. It's a little bit shaded, so um, you have to put something that can appreciate a little bit of shade there. So because of our heat, I'm gonna water this in super well. Um, and then we'll follow this and we'll show this, but let me show you a couple other places in the garden where I've done some kind of different patterns in the vegetable beds. So this bed, I've gone for big diagonals. So what we have here on the end is um, Actually, the big leaf is uh, turmeric. Next to that is ginger. I just planted all those yesterday, I've, but I started those in the house. It feels like a millennia ago. Uh, next to that, I've got my peas, and we are getting super bright. We are, we are racing against the sun today. I've got my peas. 
Uh, right now there's um, currants. I just top put extra currants in there. We'll pull those out. I'm going to plant beans in this far part of the bed here. Let me see if I can angle this in some way that you might actually be able to see this. There's no good way to make this happen, but you get the idea. So that's diagonal there. I've also gone um, for a diagonal on this bed. Um, this is mostly lettuce, so I've got a little bit of kale lined up in the back, but I've got some lettuce that I started, and then I've also been seeding lettuce in there. It's not up yet. Um, I hope I might have to reseed because it's been so hot that keeping it moist has been a problem. And then this bed across from it, we've gone for sort of another diamond pattern. We've got um, kale in the middle. Now listen, this is a lot of kale planted closely, but I eat it as it grows, so I feel like we'll be able to keep up with that. Be this beautiful red lettuce is just gorgeous. Um, in between there, I've got Swiss chard planted. It's just starting, some of the seeds are just starting to come up there. And then we've got um, some beautiful green lettuce in there. And I've actually planted um, something in the corners that I can't remember the name of right now. Um, so we still have like another row to fill in here, but I'm quite happy with how this one is looking. Okay, so that's it from the vegetable garden for today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing where this project went to so far. Of course, there'll be more updates and just kind of seeing what's been happening here in the vegetable garden. It is a busy day. I am running around like crazy trying to get plants in the ground because it went from too early to too late in about 12 hours. So uh, probably something similar is happening in your garden right now, but you know what? Hang in there. Uh, it'll all be okay. And plants are resilient more so than gardeners sometimes. All right. I hope you're having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon. Bye.